Okay, we got it. Okay, everybody, hello and uh, good morning, still morning and uh, nice and rainy outside. Uh, welcome to Between Two Teachers, uh, where we bring you the most up-to-date uh, information and um, problems that we want to solve for education uh, in our local area, especially. So today is Thursday, March the 9th, and my name is Consuelo Lara. And my name is Madeline Cronenberg, and this is episode 192 of Between Two Teachers. We're coming up to 200. Getting up to 200. <laughs> coming up. Um, uh, and as always, I am going to give our land acknowledgement. Uh, we pause to acknowledge that we have gathered on the ancestral territory of Huichin, part of the unceded land of the Chochenyo and Karkin speaking Mawekma Ohlone people. We remember their continued connection to this region and give thanks to them for allowing us to live, work, learn, and pray on their traditional homeland and offer our respect to their elders and all Ohlone people past and present. And as always, we, sit, we uh, encourage you to follow the Justice for Mawekma uh, initiative to continue to support their efforts to be recognized as a federal tribe, which they still have not, um, the recognition they still have not received. And um, also be conscious of the training that's being given and the fourth grade uh, standards in all of your schools, wherever they may be in California, whoever is listening to this, there is uh, an, um, a, a curriculum that was developed that supports the, uh, the Native American community and was written in conjunction with them that is on the East Bay Regional Park uh, website. So we support you using that in place of any older curriculum you have, which is really outdated and, uh, and mistaken. Um, and we ask you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, so we're going to start with a little bit of national news, a little bit of news before we get to our, our local issues. Uh, the first one was, I just wanted to point out that Columbia University now is the first Ivy League school. And Columbia certainly is a school that is uh, you know, among the top schools in the country to completely and permanently drop the SAT and the ACT uh, scores as testing requirements. So we are moving away from that. And that is a good thing, I think. That's definitely, uh, uh, there's a trend to do it, right? Right, and it's uh, it's one of those things that people don't realize that how it contributes to um, uh, you know discrimination and uh, inequities. Um, it really does. It's been one of those barriers for a lot of people of color and poor students. And um, people are just think, well, that's the way we do things, and that's you know, and they don't realize. You no, know, they're yeah, they don't realize that that the deal at Columbia was rich kids take test prep. Yes, it costs a lot of money. They're, they have the time and energy to do it. And that completely determined what the scores are on these tests. Yeah. So, um, so now they're gone, at least at Columbia. And that once they're gone there, that the, the, those other, the other schools are not far behind. They are in different stages of, of, uh, of removing them as, as requirements. So that's, that is a positive thing. Uh, another thing is the coronavirus emergency has basically been declared over and now schools and and, uh, and public agencies are having to figure out themselves what they want to do but we're not counting the number of cases anymore at least in california we're not um you know recording that out or requiring visitors to schools to have to uh wear masks or, or be uh, vaccinated so those yep. Yeah, it's and, behind us. And our meetings are all back in uh, person now. No more, you know, Zoom necessary. So all right, but Zoom, the, what Zoom did do is make it possible for people to attend yes. from outside, right? And so yes. that was the the big gift of uh, of Zoom that we still have. So even though it doesn't mean that the the uh, the electeds 
the uh, officials running the meeting need to be there, but the many more members of the public now can be, be present at all of these meetings. Yep, that part was kept in place, which is wonderful. It's Great. a big, big positive thing. Um, I wanted to talk about, all right, OUSD now, the case with Mr. Hutchinson is over. The, actually, the judge put out a, an um, order saying that Mike Hutchinson is now the head of, now the winner of his district. And um, he is actually going to be sworn in for the first time because his original election was during COVID. And so he's never had a swearing in in person. Okay, so he's going to be sworn in next week. And then they're going to have to get somebody to uh, to come in and, and uh, they have to figure out how, whether they're going to appoint somebody for the seventh seat, the seat that he's vacating, or if they're going to have an election, which is another choice they have. Yeah, and yes. they have to. They have a special meeting tonight to oh, decide okay. whether or not what they're going to do with their budget adjustments. So Oakland is in a an interesting uh, state of turmoil right now in terms of whether or not they have to do a lot of uh, reductions in force, put on their rifts out before March 15th, which is coming right up, or not. Yeah, yeah, wow. So their, their meeting tonight's going to determine that. Okay. Uh, then the other big thing I wanted to talk about was um, the call to action. And the call to action is around uh, a bill and it's Senate bill, is it a Senate bill or is it a Senate? No, Assembly Bill, California Assembly Bill uh, 906. And what this is, is a bill that we, we really need, we need everybody to support. And it's uh, Mike Gibson is the person who brought it forward. But what it does is it, for the first time that I know of, uh, brings additional funding into the, the county county boards that run the court schools. The most vulnerable children in the state are children who've been, uh, uh, taught, been involved in the justice system and are going to these schools. And these schools have not been funded to the level that really can support these children and give them the kind of uh, head start or, or make up for the deficiencies that they've had in their education. That's exactly right. Yeah, many times, uh, you know, they they depend a lot on uh, donations and things like that from the. I mean, that should not be the case, you know. And uh, there's so many success stories in those in those schools. I went to a teach teacher of the year reception last night at for those schools, the court schools and the juvenile hall. I mean, I have. I mean, I taught at Richmond High, and I. I, I, uh, my few words were how I know that the, these are the most vulnerable children and how they see their potential and they see their, you know, gifts and they're so committed and they just are, these teachers really go above and beyond and, um, and they need to be supported. Uh, you know, the, they just do what they can with what they have. But we really, this is wonderful news, 906, so. This is wonderful news, but it needs, people need to support it. This is not, this is not just a, a trivial bill, right? This is an yes. important bill. So uh, we'll put this out on, uh, on our Facebook page and on Twitter and uh, every social network that we've got so that folks know the importance of, uh, of supporting this bill, that this is where you're supporting children uh, uh, somebody was mentioning that many of the uh, many of the, the folks who are incarcerated in our system as adults were originally in juvenile hall, and there was no extra effort made there when when it could be made. And there is no question this is a an investment in these kids, and for every possible reason, moral every moral reason and financial reason, this needs to be supported. So. Assembly Bill 906, Mr. Gibson's bill is the one that we're going to be tracking here every week until it gets passed. Mm -hmm. And then, all right, then now we should we should talk about our our, our big topic today. Yeah, um, you know, I uh, I'm very um, involved in this 
community, this district taught here. And uh, I go to Richmond High a lot. We'll have our girls that we mentor. I uh, have uh, friends there. And so I always like to know what's going on. I go to school site council meetings and they discuss the crisis they're having with substitutes. Sometimes they'll have um, a third of their teachers. It's not uncommon. A third of their teachers, they have 60 teachers could be out and they need or need as subs. And many times they'll just have to put all the classes that are that they don't have a sub for into the theater and do like whatever and have kids do homework or have them do or whatever they can, you know? And uh, so it's a real crisis of, of substitutes. So that's, uh, that's the thing that's been the most on my mind right now and what can we do and what are the best practices? And even if, if there aren't any yet best practices, which ones do we need to, um, to bring forth? And there are some things that are happening that have to be beefed up, you know? Our county office does have um, a place where you can get materials. We at the beginning we talk about the Native American curriculum. We talk all of that's available there. How about curriculum? Uh, a sub a sub could go to to find lesson plans exactly in their grade in their content area that could, they could bring with them. You know because uh, th this is the kind of resources that we need to focus a little bit <laughs> or a lot towards the sub uh, area of education and. Uh, training. The county office is known for all of its professional development. And how about some training for how to be a good sub and what uh, uh, classroom management techniques you need uh, for subbing. And those could all be on Zoom. So we could make right. all of that available. Um, and I know that, you know, because this is just something right now, I'm, I'm going to research that myself. And if any of you think that this is needed, you're a teacher, an admin, whoever, email me and email the super email all of us on this board so that we've got it in our brains that this is a necessity and we could put it on our agenda we could talk about it and see what can be done because that's our that's our job to do that so those are two areas that for me of what i can do and feel like i can uh, uh, address but there's a lot of other things community people could do right um, um going to if you're in business or if you're in um you know any other areas where uh big government yeah big government where your workers could either volunteer to be subs volunteer to be tutors whatever there there i remember there being those programs where we would get somebody from a oh yeah they're letting us off one day a week to come and right i remember that years and years ago Right. Um, so if you know somebody in one or if you're in a rotary or a chamber of commerce, how about those resources or, or reaching out to those individuals who could be uh, subs? I mean, this is really a crisis and it's disproportional crisis in the county, because do you think they're having this problem in Moraga or Lafayette or no, we know they're not <laughs> probably. Right. And, and, and there are many reasons why. And one of them is that they uh, anyway, the, the teaching the turnover is different there, the teaching, uh, the, the community, there is access and support from within the community, so can more community members are eligible and become subs and then just sub in their own children's classes. There are all of those, those strategies that people can use, and that's great if you've got those strategies, but there's a good 10 to 30 percent of our children every day, our most vulnerable kids, who, uh, who are in classrooms with substitutes who are not supported, or they're not in classrooms. As, the, as you say, they're sitting in, in auditoriums. They're yes. sitting in auditoriums and just told, you know, do the next thing on your book or on your tablet or whatever. Right. And at this school, I mean, at Richmond High, they talked about how many teachers are not coming back. The morale, the teacher morale is very low. I mean, and it's affecting everybody, everybody. Right. You know, who wants to work in that kind of environment? You know? Exactly. So it's, exactly. it's a crisis. We need to do, we need to do something about this. Um, coaches are very important mentors uh, for, the, for the subs. If a sub feels like, okay, I'm not just being thrown to the lions, I'm gonna have a support. 
I'm gonna have a coach. I'm gonna have somebody. Uh, 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 Madeline mentioned how a, a sub being introduced to the classroom by the principal <laughs> and that made a big effect uh, on the on the classroom. On the students. On, on the, the students. students because all of a sudden because the student because what I think the principal said was and here is my friend Mrs. Jones right. Uh, that's great. That is really really. So that's the best practice. That's the best part. That is not a waste of an admin's time. Yeah. Right. And, and even though you've got all these other important things to do no, the most important thing you can do is support classrooms where the where the there is a, a, uh, a teacher coming in who the students don't know. Yeah, yeah, it, absolutely. That's, that's exactly right. And that shouldn't be that hard to figure out, but it is apparently because it's so easy to not. Right. Yeah. So easy to just say, well, you know, oh, they'll know what they're doing. Well, you know, many times what a lot of members of the public don't know is that oftentimes the substitutes are now chosen by a computer. So if you don't put into the system who that you have, if you have your own sub because you have a, as a teacher, you have a friend who's retired or, or available to come in and substitute for your class and you put that person's information in, th then you don't have the same issues as the average teacher who doesn't have that puts in that they're not going to be there today and substitutes going to come in from the sky, come in from the computer system, right? You know, and what I think, along with you get that little message where it is, when it is, what's the content? Well, part of that needs to be in. Here's a link to some materials to that grade level. Here's a link to some coaching, uh, some tips for classroom management. Here's a link as well. And here's a per people that you can um, talk to at the site. You know, we need to support them and make it something actually doable uh, for people. So um, we talked about toolkits. There are uh, companies out there who actually do put together toolkits. Those could be every school uh, could have a site-based kind of toolkit for subs. Uh, right. It doesn't have to be reinvented. This is, I mean, this has been a problem for a long time. There are, there are very uh, appropriate strategies that folks have used for a long time. It's just that we have to realize this is a, a, this is a situation that continues on and it's gonna continue on as long as, as teachers are gonna uh, not be coming to school and for all valid reasons. And now uh, in many cases, there are additional reasons after COVID that teachers have been given to be able to, to be absent from school, which means that the number of subs is gonna go up. What do we know from that? We can predict that the, that the problem is gonna get worse. Yeah. So yeah. there is no question about that. And what we need to do is look at what are the best practices to, yeah. uh, to support folks and, that are, are willing to do it. You know, we need to give personal invitations to every retired teacher from our district come back and sub yeah. <laughs> please <laughs> and uh and and reach out to them them as well um and then what what is the role of contra costa college it's right here we you know i feel like that has not been explored enough what right. could how could that college also participate in this issue so, right right there's a lot of possibilities here but it takes you know all of us being involved in bringing up this issue and bring it absolutely issue. does so this is we're gonna we're we're gonna be returning to this issue with with uh, ideas and, and progress and, and strategies because this is something that is not new and it really does deserve the attention of, uh, of on our districts our county and our state yeah yeah absolutely and our you know, our students need this, need their education because they're sitting in an auditorium. They're not getting what they're supposed to be getting. Right? No, and, and they're doing it day after day. Yeah. Right. And the problem isn't when the, and somebody looks back and well, the problem is the teacher didn't come. Well, the teacher may be not never come back. The, the, the morale problem is what it is. That's not the problem. The problem is we don't have a system to support that group of children when their teacher is not available. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. I mean, sometimes you need steps when teachers go to trainings. Oh, yeah. Right? That's one of the reasons you need the subs. Well, 
and you can even predict it, but uh, but it's the same problem. And if they don't have them, then they're sitting in a auditorium, yeah, right? making believe they're learning. Well, there's many reasons for people. Uh, apparently, there's a little group of uh, <laughs> teachers who are about to be new parents, so they're out on their, <laughs> you know, for their reasons. So we need the we need quality best bright substitutes and we need to support them and we can do this and so we're going to continue working on this as uh and let you know all the other things we find and let us know what you think also exactly Please. exactly so uh, my shout now it's time for our our shout out my shout out is to mike gibson who who is the assembly member behind assembly bill 906 yes because you, good for him nobody else has done that yes. before that's How come nobody else has even thought of it? But anyway, he did. So him. maybe this is the first of many. Yeah. So we'll be following Mr. Good. Gibson. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a call to action. All exactly. right. All right. See you next time. Bye bye.